Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice factorial equation. We have n factorial equals n cubed plus n minus 10. And we're going to be solving for n values. And we want n to be non-negative integers. Okay? So 0 is allowed, but negative 1 is not allowed. There is a way you can find the factorial of fractions other numbers like one half, so on and so forth, by using the gamma function. We're not going to get into those, but if you want, you can definitely look it up. We're going to be looking for integer solutions. And this problem kind of looks a little crazy, don't you think, if you are new to factorials or equations like these. First of all, this is called a non-standard equation. Why? Because we have a cubic function on the right-hand side, and we have the factorial. First of all, the cubic is polynomial. It's continuous everywhere, right, on the set of real numbers. And n factorial is discrete, obviously, if you just ignore gamma function and just focus on integers. In other words, these are dots that are not connected, right? Well, you can kind of connect them to get a pattern, but anyways, that kind of goes into you know, patterns and machine learning and AI and some other stuff, which we're not going to get into right now. But, anyway, so how do we solve such a problem? You can test some numbers. Guess and check is always a method. I know some people don't accept this, and I don't know why, but it's a problem-solving method. It doesn't guarantee that you're going to solve the problem or it's not very efficient all the time. And if you're taking a test and your professor may not like it, I know some people are going to be very strict and rigorous, like, you have to prove your solution, whatever. I mean, I wasn't that way. If my students were able to solve a problem when I was teaching a while ago, uh, I would accept it, of course, if they didn't just put the answer down, right? And I know teachers are very annoyed by this thing that, show your work, you know, right? They always ask you to show your work, even when you can do the problem with your eyes closed. I know some people are very smart, they can do this problem in 10 seconds. No, not really. I don't think so. But they say they do. Maybe they do. Who knows? Anyways, I talk too much. Let's get to work. So how do you solve these kinds of problems? Uh, first of all, it's non-standard. So we have to use different tools. And number theory is definitely a really uh, great subject. I think, uh, who called it the queen of sciences or something like that? Anyways, I, I just couldn't remember off the top of my head. But here's the idea. One idea is to try to factor n cubed plus n minus 10. Wouldn't that be nice, like, if I had something factorable? Well, maybe it is factorable. Who knows, right? Looks like it, yeah. Because I noticed, and trust me, I didn't really do this on purpose, but I just realized n equals 2 makes the right-hand side 0, which is nice because that means n minus 2 is a factor. But guess what? Do you think that's going to help? I doubt it, because n equals 2 makes the right-hand side 0, doesn't it? I mean, 8 plus 2, yes. But it doesn't make the left-hand side zero, so we don't have any quality. That's bad. But at least I tried, and it's funny that it turns out to be factorable. But anyways, maybe it's going to help in some other way. So if it was factorable and if it worked, it would uh, be nice. So one thing we can do, though, is expand n factorial, right? What is n factorial? We can just write it as n times n minus 1 times n minus, depending on how many factors it has, right? All the way down to 1. And that's n factorial. But I just said we can use some numbers, right? So why don't we just test some numbers? For example, can n be 2 didn't work, obviously, because it made the right-hand side 0. What about 1? Maybe it's going to work. If n is 1, 1 plus 1 minus 10, uh-oh, I'm getting a negative result. Too bad. N equals 2 is not going to work because we'll get 2 equals 0. Uh-oh, that's, that's not good either. Maybe N equals 2 is going to work. Let's go ahead and test it out. If N is 2, well, I just said 2 is not going to work. What am I talking about? N equals 3, I meant. If N is equal to 3, we're going to get 3 factorial on the left. And on the right, we're going to get 3 cubed plus 3 minus 10. This is 27, that's 30, that's 20. Uh-oh, they're not equal, too bad. It didn't work. But guess what? Factorials grow faster than polynomials. N cubed, n factorial is going to beat it. But not right away, right? Uh, at the beginning, uh, this is going to be bigger. So what do you do? You just keep testing the numbers. n equals 4. Let's do, okay, last one. I'm not going to check any more numbers. If n is equal to 4, I get 24 on the left. 
and not, let's not put an equal sign, I get 4 cubed plus 4 minus 10, which is going to give me what? 64, 68, 78. Uh-oh, this is getting much, much bigger. Wait a minute, come on, factor, you're supposed to catch up, right? Okay, okay, this is not the best approach, obviously. Let's try something else. So let's call this the first method, testing out some numbers. It didn't work, and I kind of stopped here. Uh, there's a reason why I did, and hopefully you'll find out the reason. Okay, kind of like a keeping it a secret. Let's call, go ahead and talk about second method. And this method should actually be pretty standard for these kinds of equations. What do I mean by that? When you have a polynomial with a constant term, and if you don't have a constant term, that's fine too. But anyways, let me tell you first how I came up with this problem. So I kind of did the following. I said, okay, I want my n factorial to be equal to i n cubed plus b n squared plus c n plus d. And then I just want n to be this value, plugged it in, and then try to solve for a, b, c, d. To make it a little easier on yourself, you can just make some assumptions such as, okay, I want c to be 0, or I want b to be 0, I want something else to be 0, right? Even d to be 0. And if you want a to be 0, then you'll end up with a quadratic. That's fine too, but I want to stick to the cubic. So that's how I came up with the problem. Anyways, now let's get to the problem, the solution. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide both sides by n. And you might be asking, why? The reason behind this is, first of all, the left-hand side is divisible by n, which is good because that's still going to give me an integer. But the right-hand side is going to give me a fraction, which is beautiful from a number theoretic perspective, whatever that means. So I'm going to factor n factorial into n times n minus 1 factorial divided by n, and right-hand side, I'm going to split it up, write it as n squared plus, I'm kind of dividing like this, get it, plus n over n is 1 minus 10 over n, beautiful. This is the best part, because now I can use the divisibility criteria, but first, let's go ahead and simplify this. One thing that I want you to notice one more time is that n minus 1 factorial is an integer. Isn't that beautiful? So the right-hand side also needs to be an integer, but n squared plus 1 is an integer. Is 10 over n an integer? Sometimes. When? When n divides 10. So the conclusion from here, again, this is number theory, which is always beautiful, n divides 10. What does that mean? What numbers divide 10? Okay, we're talking about factors of 10. 1, 2, 5, 10. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 5, negative 10. Forget about the negatives, I don't care. Because remember, I said n is going to be non-negative. So those are my candidates. I already know n equals 1 and n equals 2 don't work. And don't you think 10 is too big for this? I mean, come on, 10 factorial. What is it? I don't even know. I think 7 factorial is 5,040. 8 factorial should be 40,000 something. And then multiply by 9, that's going to be like 360, 360,000. Multiply by 10, that's going to be like 3.6 million, even bigger. Like 4 million, who knows? That's going to be too big, right? So n equals 5 should work. And if it doesn't, we don't have a solution too bad. And I know you're going to get mad at me, but don't. Because some equations have no solutions. Let's check it out. Okay. So we have n factorial equals n cubed plus n minus 10. And if n is equal to 5, you get 5 factorial, which is 120. And hopefully you memorized it. This is 125. n is 5, remember. This is 130 minus 10 is 120. Yay, great, we have a success. It worked, and n equals 5 is a solution. And guess what? That is the only solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.